Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made, and of course, we are rejoicing and glad in it. Praise God. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another great day of broadcast. Praise God. Well, guess what? Jesus is Lord of Lords, and he is King of Kings. Praise God. He is the one that's doing the work. Praise God. We are just his servants. Hallelujah. You and I are the servants of Jesus Christ, and you know, it is exciting being a servant of Jesus. Praise God, because you know what? He is the one. He said, I am Alpha, I'm Omega, I'm the beginning, and I am the ending, praise God. So no matter where you are today in your life, no matter what you're facing in your life right now today, praise God, I've got good news that Jesus is still Lord. He is still on the throne, praise God. He still loves you, praise God. As much as he did when he first saved you, praise God. You might have been when you first got saved, you got filled with the Holy Spirit, and you say, can it get any better than this? Well, praise God, the devil tried to tell you sometime, and it got worse when you got saved, because what happened was you became an enemy of the devil then, praise God. So he's attacked you, but guess what? Bible says, in all these things, we are still more than conquerors. He says, and we are, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So my name is Apostle Alfred Craig. Great, great being with you today, praise Praise God. We're here with today again, praise God, with, you know, to help you with the vision that God has given you and how connecting with other people, men and women of God, how you and I fulfill our vision as we connect together for a greater cause. Praise God. So I thank God that you are a woman and a man of God. Uh, uh, you are a woman and a man of purpose. Praise God. God's got a great plan for your life. Praise God for your future, for your business, for your ministry, for your family. Praise God. You haven't seen anything yet. Praise God. God, because God's got a great plan for you. So I'm looking forward to that. I see we got some individuals already on. God bless you. Marva, God bless your daughter. I see you there. Amen. Read up. God bless you. And I also see Nikki on. God bless you. As many of you are coming on, we praise God for you. And you know, I, I'm talking today. I began a lesson on yesterday on catching the vision. And, and I really want to continue with that because one of the things that God has put in my, my wife, my heart and my wife's heart, and that is, you know, to, you know, man, we're, we're 59, <clears throat> we're 69, I'm 69 years old, wife a little, early, uh, a little uh, younger than I am. But, you know, the, to fulfill the vision of God, you know, what is it if you have to leave this earth that have not completed the vision that God has given you and the assignment God has given you? And one of the great things that God has given my wife and I, we have been away from Phoenix for the last six years, praise God, but God has given us the assignment to come back to the state of Arizona to literally plant churches in Arizona, praise God, to establish his word presence and the word of faith and the spirit of excellence and, and really show people the greatness that God has. This is not to put anyone down that's already, that's already there, but God has a lane for you and a lane for me that, that no one else can fulfill that lane but us, praise God. So we're excited about coming back to Phoenix, Arizona, <clears throat> and we're excited about the vision that God has given us. We said yesterday, God has told us, you know, number one, to have what I call a one-hour church where we're trimming the fat, praise God, not involved in religion and things like that, just really a come as you are type church and it's, it's great it's powerful and then number two to establish 50 of these locations throughout the whole state of Arizona so that's sort of our our, our assignment that, that, we, that God has given to us so we're excited about that we got fresh we got fresh faith praise God to be a blessing to you and to your life to your family we're excited about that so I want to pick up where I left off kind of on yesterday and and I, and I want to kind of share with you number one today and that is why do we need a vision you know you know I, I'm talking about catching the vision why is a vision so important to us, you know, as, as, we, as, we, as we embark on different things in life, whether it's a vision for your marriage, whether it's a vision for your ministry, whether it's a vision for a new business, a vision for your family, whatever there, why is vision necessary? And this is so important. Number one is this, without a vision, my church will perish or my business will perish or my family will perish or, you know, or your marriage will perish. If you don't have a vision, you know, uh, look what the book, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 28 of Proverbs, as we look at this here, praise God. And uh, uh, my deal is kind of frozen here, but we'll, we'll just continue on. Uh, you know, uh, and that is that, you know, the devil wants you and I to, to not be people of vision. You know what I mean? He, he, he wants us to, to continue to just, you know, be stale. <laughs> Amen. And not really fulfill the plan and vision that God has for our lives. But you know, the devil is a liar. Amen. As always, he's still a liar. Praise God. And we continue to move forth in the name of Jesus. So my, my notes are kind of frozen for some reason there. But, uh, but we're going to continue on as though they're not frozen in the name of Jesus. Praise God. We're going to just keep moving forward. Hallelujah. And so, um, but just so, just, let's just continue to move on. 
in that area. Like I said, I'm not sure why my notes. Oh, there they go. There they go. Praise God. Proverbs 28 um, and 18 says this. It says, uh, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. So, so that's one of the first things that we're looking at here as we talk about um, uh, this morning. And that is that if you don't have a vision, then, you, then, then your family will perish. If you don't have a vision, your marriage will perish. If you don't have a vision, your, fa your family will perish. Your finances will perish. You have to have a vision because it says without a vision, the people will perish. And, and I don't know about you, but I am not interested in perishing in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, how about you today? Amen. I, 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 I'm not interested in perishing, and I'm sure you're not interested in, in perishing either. Praise God. So, so, so that's number one. Without a vision, the people will perish. And so number two is this, is that any vision that God gives you is to help people from their perishing predicament. Because I said, if, if, without a vision, the people will perish. So that means that any vision God gives you, whether it's for your family, whether it's for your marriage, whether it's for your children, your business or your ministry, it, 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 the vision that God gives you is it, to help people from perishing predicaments. Are you following me? And, uh, and so vision is not just about me only, but it's about those who I influence, those who God has called me to be in contact with. You're following that? So, um, so the essence of vision then is to, is, to, is to help people from their perishing predicaments. So, you know, I may have a perishing predicament. I may have a, a, a sickness in my body that the doctors don't know what to do. But a vision, uh, you follow me, can help uh, from the Lord and say, you know what, I, I'm going to have to run the issue of blood. But she heard of Jesus. She got a new vision, didn't she? Because she went to all the doctors. The doctors couldn't do anything. She went to the, you know, uh, the banks. Uh, she ran out of money. But when she heard of Jesus, she got a different vision. And she said, you know what, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I can be made whole. So you following that? So she got a new vision. So sometimes all it takes is a word from God to get a brand new vision of what God is saying that you can have in your life. Praise God. It, 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 it brings something new that you have never seen that your eyes may not have thought about. But a vision, the woman, she got a vision. She said, you know what? If I can touch this garment, I can be made whole. So a vision then is, is a way of rescuing you when God gives you a vision from perishing predicaments. And that's why vision is so important. So, so as I look at the vision that God has given me, whether it's for the ministry there in Phoenix, Arizona, or your family, or for my family, or whatever there, you know, uh, I, that becomes my assignment. Are you following me? So when God gave my wife and I this assignment to come back to Phoenix, Arizona, you know what I mean, to establish 50 churches throughout the whole state, to, to, to start a, 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 you know, a, a, a one-hour church where we criminal all the fat, all the religion off there, and it's been a blessing to the people of God, that, that word became a, 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 the next level of vision for us. Like if you're in the Thomas' office, are you following me? Then, you know, he starts up at the top. Big letters, then go down to the next size, the next size, the next size. Well, see, each, each level of your vision, God just makes it more fine-tuned. Are you following those areas? And so that's why vision is so vitally important for your life. And so think about this. So I'm going to ask myself, as we talk about vision, you know, what perishing predicament am I called? What perishing predicament am I called to rescue people, people from? Well, I know myself. I'm called, number one, to, uh, to bring a word of faith, you know, a word of, word of victory to people. Are you following me? I'm also called of God to help people transition from poverty to prosperity. Are you following me? From sickness to health, from poverty to wealth. I'm called to, you know, help, help, help people discover that, you know, I don't care how old you are. You know, the Bible says you should still bear fruit in your old age. You know, so to, to get people out of this, this retirement, you know, settling down and, 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 and letting go of their vision. I'm, I'm, I'm called to wake up the, 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 the giant inside of you to say, you know what, I don't care how old you are, how young you are, you are purpose, a person of purpose. So my, my, my assignment is to help you in whatever area that, of your life that it seems like you're perishing in and you need, some, you need a rescuer, <laughs> praise God. And I'm excited about having a word for that, amen. So, so another thing I, 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 I like to always do, because like I said, I've been passing for like, Oh, my God, for over 45, six, I passed over 45 years. Last six years, you know, I've been just kind of hearing God for some more areas. But um, I have to I ask myself, you know, when I was a hairdresser for 20 years, I, I, you know, I was a hairdresser for 20 lot, solid years, but I have to always ask someone, why should someone pass up all the other hair salons and come to my hair salon? Are you following me? I have to be able to answer that question because there's a lot of hair salons. A lot of people have the same likes as I had. 
But what was the difference is my, my vision, my assignment, my anointing it, that, that's on my life, whether it was, it was in the heritage industry, it was, the, it was the, the giftings and what I provided for the people. Whether it's in ministry, it's the, it's the anointing on my life that they can't get nowhere else. You may get a good sermon everywhere else. You may get some good preaching somewhere else. But the anointing of my life, I need to always have it because God gives me distinctive anointing. God has given you distinctive anointing that nobody can have but you because you have your own lane. Are you following me? And, and so that's why you have to be in competition with anyone else because what makes you different it's not that you also are a preacher or you also have a business like that, but what makes you different is the anointing and the call of God that's on your life. Are you following that? It's so important to understand that. So that's what people do. So therefore, you and I don't have to be intimidated by anyone else that said, you know what, they're just trying to do what I'm doing. No, they may be doing something like you're doing, but nobody can do it like you can do it. <laughs> you follow me? Because nobody has the, the fingerprint that God has put on you. Are you following me? Nobody has that but you. So there's no intimidation there. You know, no, 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 nobody trying to copy you. They may copy you. They may, they may try to imitate you, but they cannot duplicate you because God has made you very special. And the same thing about us when we come to ministry, you know, when we come down with, the, with our churches there in Phoenix, Arizona, we're not trying to be intimidated by anyone or copy anyone, praise God. We believe that God has given my wife and I a certain a, a, a finger, a, 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 a fingerprint that's on our lives, a certain anointing that's on our lives that we're bringing to Phoenix, Arizona to be a blessing to your life in Jesus' mighty name. You got that today? So here's the more things I put on there. Think about this. These are some, some of my notes I have. And that is, with, with purpose, when I understand my vision, I will be drawn into my purpose based on the vision that God plants in my heart. You got that? So you're going to be drawn to your purpose based upon the vision God puts on your heart, and you will know your creative purpose based upon the vision. And that's why I believe in God that many of you, our visions are connected together. Remember yesterday we read what the Bible said when Paul saw the vision, the people immediately said God has called us to do it. So God connects people with, with you know, uh, that, that their purpose and, uh, is connected. You know, they're supposed to be together. The disciples were supposed to be with Jesus. That was the purpose of why they were born. Uh, uh, Paul went to Macedonia and connected there because the people said that we need help. And so the people that was with Paul said, we're called to do that too. So what I'm saying is there are people that God connects with you. Are you following me? That, that your purpose and their purpose uh, connects together. Are you following me? And each of you feel God's call to do it. And that's what I'm believing, God, for many of you that are watching me, whether you're watching me on Facebook, Instagram, how are you watching me today? Uh, I'm believing, God, that just as Paul, when he saw that vision, there were certain people that said God has called us to do it also. They joined with him, and the Macedonian church, which we now know as the Philippian church, was birthed out of that. And I, that's what I'm believing, God, for many of you in that area also. So, so when I have a vision then, I now, I now, I now know God's perspective on my situation. Uh, when, when I'm in vision, I'm in partnership with God. The Bible says we are workers together with God. So, so, so when I get my vision clear, then, 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 I, then there's a God factor in there. That I'm not just, this is not a career for me anymore. This is actually a call from God for me to fulfill. Are you following me? And I like what they, that when Paul saw the vision, said that people said God called us to do it. So I'm really looking for people that'll, that'll sense the, the call of God for, uh, on their lives for the vision God has put in my wife and our heart because we cannot do it ourselves. We're kind of, we got to be a dream team. A dream team is made. Everyone that comes with their gifts, their talents, their abilities, their anointings, we put it together and we become an explosive force for God. <laughs> You're following that. And that's what I'm expecting in your life in the name of Jesus. Now, so uh, also when I'm walking in the vision of God that God gave me for my life in ministry, that God also commits his power to bring it to pass. So I can be confident. Jesus Christ said this, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Bible said Jesus worked with them, confirming the word with signs following. So I can expect God's power and his presence with me as I'm doing this. So let's look at a few points here in that area about how to catch the vision. You follow me? How, how do we catch this vision that God has put on our hearts in the, in, in, in the area? Uh, one man said this. He, says, he said, if you can't see it, before you see it, you're never going to see it. <laughs> you follow me? If you can't see it before you see it, you're never going to see it. In other words, you got to see the vision with the eyes of your faith 
before you see it with your five senses in order to see it in the physical realm. You got that? In other words, what you see with your faith is what you're going to see in your future. Now, so in order to look at what God told Joshua uh, in, in Joshua chapter number six and verse number two, uh, he says here, he says, and the Lord said unto Joshua, see, <laughs> you follow me? I have given you into your hand Jericho. And he says here, he says, and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. But notice what he says. Now, at this time, Jer Jer Jericho is, is locked down. Nobody's able to come in or go out. But God says, Joshua, you got to see it before you see it in order to see it. So God is saying, Joshua, you got to get your eyes off of all the, the reasons why this won't work. Get your eyes off of all the obstacles and the setbacks and the hindrances there. I need you to see I've already given it to you. <laughs> you follow me? That's the eye of faith. So what, so what I'm saying to you, you know, God, God has put this 50 churches in my heart. I see it. Now, I don't see it in the physical realm, but I see it with the eyes of my faith because it's a vision God gave me. I see many of you joining with me. Uh, you follow me? I already see that in my, in my spirit. And I'm already praying for you already. I'm already praying for you to, to get the eyes of your understanding open to know God's purpose for your life so we can help and get this thing moving in Jesus' name so that Arizona can be taken for God, families be touched, marriages be touched. You know, people get healed and, and, and business, new businesses are birthed out as a result of us seeing it before we see it. Are you following? So I'm asking God, open our eyes, God, that we can see what you're doing in the state of Arizona through this ministry and how lives are going to be impacted and changed as a result. And then notice what God also said to Abraham in those areas. And this is in the book of Genesis chapter 13 and verse number 14. He says this. He said, and the Lord said unto Abraham, after that lot was departed from him, lift up now your eyes and look from the place where you are, north, south, east and west and in verse 15 he says for all the land which you see to thee will i give it and to thy seed forever so notice what he's saying there he says he says abraham number one lot had to be leaked sometimes we gotta get lot out of the way lot means people that say it's impossible people that's always you know your, your, your hindrances and things like that he said well, as soon as lot was gone he said, Abraham, now lift up your eyes and now look to the north. I mean, in other words, but I like what he said. He said, look from, where you're, he, he, look from where you are, not at where you are. Because sometimes we're looking at where we are and it's limiting where we're going to go. He said, but look from where you are, north, then look south, then look east and west. He said, for all the land which you see, that's what I've given to you. And that's what God has put in my heart. He's really helped me to see uh, Arizona, you know, all the way from Tucson to Gallus, the Flagstaff, all your family, the e, you know, to east to the west, praise God. I see it in my spirit. He said, for all the land which you can see. In other words, it's not just this little light, my, uh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine in my neighborhood. No, that, God said, you got to look farther than that, my friend. He said, I want you to look to the north, the south, east, and the west. And so what I've already done. I've already, you know, went before the Lord and, and, and looked at the, the people he wanted me to reach. I've got 50 locations by zip codes already set, <laughs> you follow me, in my vision where we're going to plant these 50 churches at throughout the state of Arizona. Are uh, you following me? Because God says, God told me Arizona. He didn't tell me a neighbor. He told me Arizona. Go plant 50 churches throughout the whole state of Arizona. So I already got those. I've already got them together. So that's why we're going to be launching this thing. Praise God. Here, we're going to be launching it uh, uh, January the 7th. Uh, uh, 2024, but all the time I'm going to be training you all on this, getting this vision in your spirit, because we're going to launch out on, on, on the first day with, with we're going to have a, 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 a church, we're going to launch with our first two churches, in, in one in South Phoenix and one in West Phoenix, are you following me? And then also, you that are online, because I've got a lot of you that are online with me in different states, and then we're going to, I'm believing God to launch online churches at the same time. Are you following? So, but you're going to get trained in that as we, as we go forth in the name of Jesus. So the first thing you got to do is we must have a clear vision from God. That's the first thing we need if, if, we're, if we're going to really uh, 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 catch this vision. We've got to have a clear vision from God. Number two is we've got to know our assignment. 
What is the assignment that God has given us? You got that? Number three is we got to don't be pressured by people uh, uh, who, who to take steps before God tells us. Because sometimes people say, let's do it right now. We can do it. No, no. You know, and then number four, it says you must divorce yourself from people what the, uh, uh, from what people say if you're going to see God move in your life. Because sometimes people will tell you, oh, Arizona, you know, we don't, you don't, we'll just be stuck by one church because that's not what God said. God said 50 churches. Are uh, you following me? I heard one guy on, on, on the, uh, he, I, I see a, a, a response that I got one time on, on uh, I think it was on Facebook. The guy said, who ever heard of a one-hour church? How are you going to have church in one hour? Well, you know, I, I've seen it around, I, I've seen it before. God showed me different churches that was already doing it. And God said, that's what I want you to establish. So, see, sometimes you think about all the religion you've had, all the different things people are doing in churches, you know, that, that have nothing to do that much with, you know, what, 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 what God wants to have. And, and God just told me to trim the fat. You know, I, I done pastored longer than the average person in Phoenix, Arizona, throughout Arizona. I done pastored, I, I pastored over 45 years before I stopped. And I'm starting back up again. So I understand passion. I, I, I've been from everywhere from, you know, the two-hour services to the three-hour services. I've been, I've been in all of it. But the Holy Spirit said trim the fat because the people need, especially after COVID, are you following me? People need to get the word in their lives and get all the other religion out of there. So that's my assignment in Jesus' name. So you can't, you got to divorce yourself from what people are saying. Because sometimes people, people are trying to judge you based upon their religion or based upon the rut they're stuck in. <laughs> you follow me? But I'm not stuck in the rut. Amen. God speaks to me. I'll change in a minute. Praise God. And I thank God I got a beautiful wife that, that changed with me. And G, we, 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 we're, we're like that. When God speaks to us, God, we, we, we move forward in Jesus' name. That's like when we first came to Las Vegas, people said, Dr. Craig, what y'all going away to Las Vegas for? I didn't know. I was like Abraham. God just told me to come. But through this point, through, through being these six years, God gave me fresh assignment and the next level of ministry he had for my life. Are you following me? So a lot of times you don't know why God is speaking to you to do certain things are you, that your eyes have not seen, that your ears have not heard. But you know God is leading you in this direction. And so we're, like I said, so we're coming back to Phoenix with a fresh revelation from God, a fresh assignment from God for the next level. Notice what Jesus Christ says. This is important because, again, we're not just out to, to reach a neighborhood. We're not just out to reach a city, but we're out to reach people throughout the whole state of Arizona. Now, so notice what Jesus said. You know, I think we're in line with Jesus. I, I believe we are. Notice what Jesus said in Mark 16 and 15. He says, uh, he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then Matthew 24, 14 says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And then in Matthew 28, 19, it says, Jesus said the latest last words, go ye therefore make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we can see that Jesus did not leave uh, this little light of mine, let the light shine, vision with the disciples. He said, go into all the world, teach all nations to every creature. So, so, our, so our assignment, are you following me, is not so we can get another degree, which is another wrong thing. I got degrees myself. Our assignment is not so I can just get a, you know, a one, one you know, nice, beautiful church. I love that also. But our assignment is to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out to every person. So if there's 7 million people in Arizona, that's my assignment. <laughs> you follow me? That's, that's my region. Are you following me? And, and my outlook. And so uh, my goal is to, is to fulfill the assignment of God to the best of my ability, but also to connect with many of you that are going to be a part of that assignment, accepting it as your call from God. So I thought about this, you know, in that area, uh, as I'm looking at, you know, the possibility of this, Circle K has 16, 618 stores in Arizona. McDonald's has 212 stores in Arizona. Uh, 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 Walmart has 113 stores. And guess what? Now one hour church is in there. One hour church has 50 churches <laughs> in Arizona. You said, Dr. Craig, you got 50 churches? Yeah. I see it before I see it. So I can see it. I'm going to say it again. I see it before I see it in the physical realm so I can see it. And I'm believing God that many of you also, God's anointing your eyes and your ear to see it also before we see it so we can see it. We can be a part of 
the assignment of reaching God. I believe God is sending people. God's going to be moving people to Arizona to be a part of this. And many of you that's already in Arizona, different parts of the state, different parts of the cities, that God is saying, I'm going to connect. I sense the call of God in this area in the name of Jesus. So it's important. So, so, my, so my thought is, like I said, my goal is to, is to uh, on January the 7th, two locations, one in South Phoenix, one in West Phoenix, uh, along with, uh, for those that are uh, my partners around the world, you know, to, to have also online churches uh, that's a part of that to establish churches in different, different parts of the state. Uh, you have different states of the country and things like that, and even in the world. So we're going to do that also. And, 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 and so we're looking at getting this thing started January the 7th in Jesus' name. So what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'll be doing here is this, is uh, 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 I'm going to have, and, and some of you that's on Facebook and also on YouTube, you see that, is, is, I'm, I'm going to have what I, what I call a, um, a, a luncheon. I'm going to have a luncheon, what I call a Catch the Vision luncheon. Uh, it's going to be October the 28th at 12 p.m. You know, uh, my wife and I, we're going to be in Phoenix at that time, and it's going to be at BJ's Restaurant. I, I, the advertiser should be on, on your email, on your text, or whatever there, but uh, or, or also on Facebook, but at BJ's Restaurant uh, there in, in Goodyear, Arizona. And, and, and I'd like for you to come. You that sent on the call, I want you to connect with us, not just online, but I want you to connect with us, you know, in a, in a physical way so we can really get to know you and connect with each other and develop fellowship together. So I would like for you to uh, register for that in those areas. There's, there's free registration. Of course, you'll pay for your meal when you come, and that's decided, you know, you can eat, you know, you can, you can eat beans or, or whatever you want to eat when you go there. So, it's that, so, you know, that's up to you, but it's no cost to come. Because the whole point is I want to connect with you, okay? And you can click the, the link that's on Facebook. You can click the link. You can scroll down also and click the link that's on YouTube there, praise God. And you can be a part of, uh, you know, uh, us connecting together for our first time of fellowship together. That's what Jesus ate with his disciples, didn't he? He fellowship with them, and that's how they connected. So I want to connect with you uh, 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 in that same area between now and then. So it's going to be at BJ's Restaurant. You can click that. It's going to be a great blessing for you. I know, because like I said, I've... I, you know, when God gave me an assignment, sometimes it looks slow because, you know, some, I heard Miles Monroe say something. When God gives you a vision, that you have to sometimes at first go up by yourself. It's kind of alone for it because you're the only one seeing it. So right now, it's kind of like, oh, my God, you gave me this assignment. I'm not seeing that much traction from it. But I understand the assignment is there. I'm believing God now that he and the Holy Spirit, along with the angels, will draw many of you to this assignment in those areas over this next three months. And, you, and you'll begin to see from the Holy Spirit what God's want to do in, in, in that area. So again, you can click that link and you can, you can register. Don't cost nothing to register. We're gonna get together. And that way I can, I can, people, I can know that you're coming to be a part of that. My wife and I will be there and connect with you and fellowship with you, praise God. And, and let's dream together of what God has for our lives in Jesus' name. So, so as I'm doing this then, also what I could do because, again, my wife and I, I've been doing this full time. God called me away from the, from the business world uh, of over, to, oh, my God, over 30 years ago. And he told me he wanted me to do, do this full time because, you know, because of the assignment, the normative assignment that God has on my life. You know, in that area, you know, because like I said, you know, when I, when I was in hair business, I, I love business. But God said, kind of like Abraham, God put me away from that. Nothing wrong with people in business. I think without people in business, I couldn't survive no way because God, God got to have somebody that goes, got to have someone that sins. Amen. So I thank God for those he has called to business. But God called me away from business. And the way God says, when God gives me an assignment, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example of what God said to Moses when God told Moses to build the, the tabernacle of what God said to, from Moses to talk to the people about. And, and, and this is in Exodus chapter 35 and verse number 4. It says, And Moses spake unto the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord, and whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring an offering on the, uh, of the Lord, gold, silver, and brass. So we can see that, that whenever God gets ready for a new project, he has to have partners. Let me say again, anytime God gets ready for a new project, he has to have partners that say, you know what, I'm in agreement with that. You know, and, 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 but he says, but he gave Moses specific instructions. He says, only call those who have a willing heart. In other words, this is not for something that you got to drain money out of people and like that, but those that have a willing heart. And, 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 and then notice what he says here in verse number uh, 21, he says, he says, and, every, and they came, everyone 
whose heart stirred them up, and everyone whose spirit made him willing. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation for all his service and for the holy garments. So we can see here that whenever God gives a vision, he also provides provision, but he does the providing through the people who are called to that assignment. And so I'm asking you also that as you're sensing God's call on this assignment and you're sensing God saying, you know, you're supposed to be one of the ones that is, 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 to, is to support this, you know, in the earth. But let me tell you something. What, what I've noticed over the years that when God gives me an assignment and you sow into that, there's a special grace that's on your life. That's what God, Paul told people in the, in the scripture, in the book of uh, in the book of Philippians, he said, when you partner with me, God supplies all your needs. So when you partner on these projects that God got, God uses that project as a way to get your needs met in Jesus name supernaturally. So I'm asking you to pray about that and, and, and be sensitive to the spirit of God as to what he would have you to do. Notice what happened when that happened. That's what I'm, this is what I'm expecting also uh, uh, here in in, uh, in Exodus chapter 36 now, I like this part here. Exodus 36 verse 3 he says here, And they received of Moses all the offering uh, which the children of Israel brought for the work of the sanctuary, service sanctuary to make it with all. This is now. And they brought unto him free offerings every morning. And then in verse number 4 it says, And all the wise men that brought, that wrought the work of the sanctuary came every man from the work which they made. And then verse number five says, and they spake unto Moses, I like this part, the people bring more than enough. <laughs> Glory to God for the service of the work of which the Lord has commanded. And verse number six, and Moses gave commandment uh, 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 there. He said, Moses gave commandment and they called it to be proclaimed throughout the camp. Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary so the people were restrained from giving. And in verse number seven it says, for the stuff that they had was sufficient for all the work to make it and too much. Praise God. That's what I'm believing God I'm believing God for a too much offering. <laughs> Amen. That God's going to speak to your heart. You that God is putting in, in, in your heart to see this thing through. Are you following me? I'm believing that God's putting it in your heart. Are you following me? To see this thing through. Amen. To see God do some mighty works, you know, through, uh, in the whole state of Arizona. And then many of you that are throughout the states, you know, in America and around the world, as we, as we partner with you to have churches, you know, all around the world through there also, uh, that, <clears throat> that as we do this, that I'm believing God that the flipping 4, 15 through 19 are going to happen in your life. Well, you partner with me in this endeavor that all your needs are going to be supplied supernaturally according to God's riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So I'm asking you to partner with me. And again, as you look there on Facebook there, on YouTube also, you scroll down there and you'll see where <clears throat> you can give. Number one, you can, you can use the, uh, the, the link there at the one hour link there. You can give, praise God, <clears throat> that way. Uh, or or uh, <clears throat> let me, someone's trying to call. I'm not sure why people try to call this time in the morning. Praise God. Oh, they, I'll just let them hang up. Praise God. But anyway, <clears throat> under the one hour church, uh, you can you can give right there by clicking that link in, in that area and it'll take you right to our giving area. Or you can go through Zelle. Zelle is a very powerful way to do it now. Just go right through Zelle and it'll go right into the ministry uh, offering or you can use Cash App there. That's also there. Then also you can use the the uh, uh, the what I call the QR code. The QR code is, is very simple. Just use that QR code to get right to the giving area also. But what I'm doing now, I'm receiving partners. I'm asking you to catch the vision of this. I'm going to catch the vision of 50 churches throughout the state of Arizona and then also, you know, online ministry throughout the United States and the world. Praise God. I'm asking you to catch the vision for this because God is doing going to do a mighty thing in your life and we're going we're gonna to help people. We're going to, because God, remember, said we're called to help people from their perishing predicaments. And you joining with us. One can put a thousand in flight, but two can put 10,000 in flight. So I'm, I'm, so I'm thanking God for you. I'm thanking God for you of being a part of what God is doing in the ministry. Praise God that your eyes have not seen. I just heard what God's got planned for us. So it's been exciting to be with you. I'm going to come tomorrow with part three of making your vision clear and catching the vision. So until tomorrow, this has been Apostle Alfred Craig saying, may God's riches and his very best be yours. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye now.